Hi everybody, um, just wanted to do a quick video tonight um, just to show you sort of some tricks on doing materials and things and textures. Um, so what we've got here, this is that the project we were working on with the health and the, you know, the, stat, the damage and the score system. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is to make a brick texture to put in the wall, uh, add a displacement map, a normal map and just to get it looking a little bit different to just a, a piece of paper, uh, just an image on the wall. So. Um, one thing that a lot of people seem to get to do wrong when I watch people like using Unreal is when you put in a basic shape, you go to some reason. I think it's probably the wording of things. Uh, you get a basic and you put a cube in, uh, and they try and texture that and they try and stretch that out. Um, this is wrong. This is a static mesh. Um, doesn't work well with you know. It's good. It's a good for an object to put in the game, just to sort of have it somewhere, have it as like a placeholder. But it's not good for building geometry out or for building walls and things. So no, don't use basic and any of these shapes. Go to geometry and use one of these. And your box is, is your bread and butter. It's great. Um, again, another thing people tend to get wrong with this is what they'll do. They'll, they'll go through and start squishing um, the object and you know, stretching it out and things like this. And that creates horrific looking. You, know, you can see it here. You can see that the texture, if it goes on here now, it's going to get all stretched and squished. And that's not good. Um, set this back. You've got numbers over here on the right hand side. Um, your properties of your object, wherever you, wherever you select in the game, or so in the in the world, will have, so if I select the main character here, you'll see that the actual details panel will change here. If I select this, it's all crashing. There we go. Right, if I select this, this will change. Everything has its own, so this is a context sensitive menu. So you have your details panel. So you try to delete that. Drag in a new box. That's fine. Um, change these values here so um, 100 unreal units so at the moment they're 200 by 200 that's two meters so 100 of these is one meter so that's about the height of the character the character is about six foot that's about two meters it works quite well so that's your z height there so we might want to make it say 400 double the height great uh, change the y to say 50 or I should do it the other way around change it to say 800 and we'll change this to say 50 Brilliant. That's kind of a wall. Um, what you'll see as well, it's sort of in the in the floor. If you bring it up in the air, another little tip, bring it up in the air slightly, and that's where everything's going. So Adobe's deciding to install an update. Thanks. Uh, bring it all up in the air, and press end on your keyboard. And what it will do, it will sync it to the closest sort of next object, and that will sync it to the floor. Um, there you go. So that's all flush to the floor now. You shouldn't have any gaps. And if I play that now. Thanks, Adobe. All right, we can have our character, and there he is, lovely wall. Um, I want this to look like a brick wall, okay? So let's just see if I get some of my other folders. So what I've got here, um, I've just got a little little JPEG image, a pinch from the internet. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. There's textures.com is a great website. Make sure you sign up. Um, and like, it's a nice seamless brick texture. Ooh. Um, what we're going to do? I'm going to made a folder here called Materials. I uh, made another folder called Brick, so if we go back up, uh, Materials, Brick, this is the red and green we made before, uh, Brick, I'm literally going to drag in that file into here, and it's going to make a, a texture known as Brick, brilliant. Uh, you might want to rename it, again with the naming conventions, uh, put like a T or something in front of it, T underscore Brick, and that's not good enough, this is again something people tend to get wrong. Uh, they'll start putting textures on the walls and things like that. Not quite right. Textures make material. So if I right click the texture, I say create material, I'm going to say, so instead of T, I'm going to say M underscore, I got rid of the K, didn't I? Okay. And it's made a material out of that texture. And there you go, and that should load up. If you double click it, you can have a nice new interface to learn as well. And this will be loading up, loading up. Let's have that in. I'm literally going to drag this and put it on the wall. There it is. So if I play now, hey, it doesn't look terrible. It looks all right. You know, it's a good seamless texture. But there's an issue with it. If I actually move the camera around, that is as flat as you like. It looks like a PS2 game. We're going back to early, early 3D, and the lighting is hitting. You can see it there. It is just like a sheet of paper, you know, with that picture on it. That's fine. If you're going for mobile or you're going for low quality graphics, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you know, Unreal has some nice ways, you know, good incorporated features which we'll, we can use to make that look a little bit better, a little bit, a little bit more realistic, without having to model like all these brick walls. Remember, this is just a flat, 
Yeah, cube. Um, so the bit of software I'm going to show you is something called Awesome Bump. Um, some of you might think there's a bit of cheating. It kind of is in some way. Uh, it's an open source bit of software. And what it does, it creates things like bump maps, specular maps, uh, your height map, and all that kind of stuff, which you can then place into uh, Unreal. Um, the website here, if you just Google Awesome Bump, uh, you'll find it as a downloads page, and this is version 4 we're running here. And what we'll do, the software is here, so if I grab, let's get my downloads folder back. And I'm going to grab the brick JPEG, I'm going to click on the word diffuse, and diffuse is another word basically for your for your, your base image. So we drag that onto here, let go, and you'll get this mixed up sort of image going on here, it looks a bit crazy. Uh, if you go to enable preview, I'll check that on there, scroll down, convert N and H, click that, and then get rid of the enable preview. And this, that's kind of it. There are loads of dials and things you can tweak and try and make it better, but just for the interest of, of speed, uh, we're just going to go with the defaults right now. And there's going to be some things you're not going to want as well, like you've got we've got a, a metallic sort of map on here. Um, unless you want metal bricks, um, we probably don't need it, but it's fine. We'll all export anyway. Um, so we're going to go to the output tab here, and then I'm going to click on this bottom save one here, and we're going to tell it to say to go to the folder I made a folder called brick and I'm just going to say select this folder and it's quite clever it's nice actually it does a good little naming convention there's our brick folder and it's now made these files here so we've got the fuse, the height, the metallic, the normal, the occlusion, the roughness and the specular map and we can use these now in Unreal so I'm going to close this down and I'm literally just going to take all of them uh, it's probably not bothered with the diffuse drag them all because we've got it ready and just drag them in here and I'm real smart enough as well, it will know that this one underscore N was a, a normal map. Are you sure you want that? Yes, please, we do want that. Um, so now we've got all these new files. Uh, we'll save them all. Um, always save. Save often. This software likes to crash just when you don't want it to. But there you go. Um, what we'll do, we'll open up our material. And now it's kind of like filling in the blanks, basically. It's going to make this slightly smaller. Uh, bring it to the side. So we can see things. It's much easier with two screens. Uh, just trying to get it all in. But the first thing on our list, we've got metallic. I don't want any metallic. We do have a metallic map, the underscore M, but I don't want this to look very metallic. It's it's bricks. So literally, what I would do with this, if you drag out and type the word const, there's a constant, and just leave it at zero. So always zero, basically. You don't have any metallic on here. Uh, the specular, we have an S. So I'm going to drag that into here. And we take the white and we go to the white. And the light will hit it a bit nicer. Get that to load. Um, next one we've got the roughness. Uh, we have a nice roughness map as well. So we can drag that into there, to there. Doesn't think we're getting many changes just yet. But you'll see. You can actually see a bit of lighting there. See how it hits that? That's very different as it was before. If I hit apply now, you see this will update. And that's again beauty of the engine. It likes to, yeah, it's quite real time now, it's not the old UDK which had to build every two seconds. That's a bit better, getting there. The big changes will happen though, we're just going to do the, the normal, let's grab this. This is your normal, this is more your bumps, so we'll drag that into there. It'll take a little bit while to load, uh, hit apply, and see what happens now. There we are. I've actually got sort of some depth to this now, can you see that? We'll make it even better in a minute. Um, you've also got the ambient occlusion, that's sort of your shading. Into there. Lovely. Right, the last one we're going to do though, it's a bit of fun. Um, we want to do something with the world displacement. Okay, If you've got a DX11 graphics card, uh, you'll be able to do with this. It's called tessellation. So if we select the actual main thing here, uh, scroll this down a little bit, and so this is where it says here, it says no tessellation. I'll we'll switch it to flat, that's the least expensive one. Um, go over to your your height map, sorry, your brick H. Drag that across here. And we could just plug it in, but I want to make it a little bit stronger. So what we'll do is press M on your keyboard for a multiply. Uh, drag that to the world displacement. Uh, drag that to there. Uh, so drag the A to that. Drag out from the B, type in const. And let's change this value to say 3. So it's going to be multiplied by 3, the power of that, to make it 
make the effect look a little bit stronger. And we should, so you're going to get some compiling going on there. We should see quite a bit of a difference in this flat wall. Remember, it's just a flat wall. You know, this is just a cube. Come on. Or nothing will happen, and this is all rubbish. There we go. We see that? It looks a bit wibbly. And that's tessellation. And it kind of. There you go. Making that wall look slightly a bit more realistic. I think it looks cool. Um, obviously, you know, we need better lighting and everything like that will make this look even better. Um, let's grab a light. And that's L and click as a quick lighting. Right, let's play. There you go. And you can see that the light's hitting it much nicer. Uh, you kind of got the you know, you got the specular working properly. You got this. If I let's just get your this back on as well. Let's go a bit silly with this. This changes to say I don't know, nine. This could get horrible. Ooh, you can see that now. A lot more messed up. A lot more crunchy. But it looks good. You know, it could be sort of some alleyway, an older street or something like that. Brilliant. All right, well, give that a go yourselves. Um, if you've got any questions, just leave a message. And yeah, hopefully that was good.